In this video lecture, we're going to be talking about plate tectonics, which is a scientific vocabulary word that is a theory. So plate tectonics is a theory. You could call it the theory of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is one of the most important topics in all of earth science and all of geology because it is a theory that is incredibly correct. Theories can be pretty much facts. Theories can make facts, right? A theory can prove so many things that we learn new facts using a theory, but theories are also based off of other facts. A scientific theory is an explanation that has been proven right so many times that we treat it as fact at this point. So plate tectonics is a theory based on and responsible for all of modern geology. It is based on facts and it is a fact. It's just something that happens. It started out as a theory and it got so much evidence that it became a true theory and now it's almost a fact. Okay? So earlier we talked about this idea of rock layers and this question. How could a fish fossil end up on the top of a mountain? And one of the possible answers was like, oh, you know, um, a bird brought it and, and dropped it there. A bird brought the fish and dropped it there. But let's imagine these mountains were a thousand miles from any ocean and it's a fish from the deep sea. Well, how did that fish get to become a fossil in the rock layers, the strata in the mountains? How is that possible? Well, the answer, and this might be a bit of a crazy one, and it's the truth, is that the rocks beneath the ocean moved over and up becoming a mountain. So literally, there are all kinds of fish fossils that you can find in places that are nowhere near the ocean. And I'm talking ocean fish. And the reason for that is that the earth is actually moving. The earth is made of tectonic plates that actually move slowly over time, but they do move. And so if a fish died at the bottom of the ocean and became a rock in the bottom of the ocean, and then the ocean rock started moving all of it, a giant plate of it started moving, and then moved up even, you could end up with a fish fossil from the deep sea found at the top of a mountain. Which is a crazy answer, but it is the truth and we have proven it over and over again. So the reasonable question that you're asking now is, how is that possible? How is that possible to have a fish fossil from the deep sea end up at the top of a mountain. And it is the theory of plate tectonics. The theory of plate tectonics states that the rocks on our planets float on a more dense layer of flexible rocks, which means that they can move around. So again, the theory of plate tectonics states that the rocks on our planet float on top of more dense kind of flexible rocks which means that underneath the earth, there must be almost liquidy sort of plastic or foam-like rocks that you can move over top of. At least the rocks on our planet at the surface, they float over top and move around with these plates of rock. So let's define a very simple word. A tectonic plate is a layer of rock on earth that is moving. That's it. It's a layer in the crust on the earth that is moving around on top of other rocks which are a bit more flexible. They're so hot that they can kind of move around. Um, that is the theory of plate tectonics. It states simply that the crust of the earth is floating on top of the mantle of the earth. Let's talk more about these tectonic plates though. What are these tectonic plates? Well, there are two categories of plates that I want to focus on. There are oceanic plates which are so heavy that they end up lower on the earth so low that they create a bowl in the earth, like a bowl shape. And when it rains, that's where the water goes. That's where the ocean comes from. There are parts of the earth's crust that are a little heavier, so they don't rise as high. And so they create a bowl, and that's where all the oceans flow into. Whenever it rains, the water runs off and it ends up in the ocean. So oceanic plates are really dense, which means they tend to sink or go lower. They're heavier, and they're found beneath the oceans. Continental plates are what we live on. That's where all the continents are from. They're made of continental plate or continental crust. These are less dense, so they tend to float literally higher on the earth, on that sort of ocean of flexible rock 
that the crust exists over top of. I don't want to say it's lava because it's literally not lava. It's not magma. If you go low enough, it becomes magma. Magma, But it's just rocks that are so hot that they're kind of starting to get a little liquidy and a little squishy. So the crust, the continental plates specifically, are lighter. So they tend to float higher on top of that ocean of plasticky rocks. Not literal plastic. By plastic, I mean bendable, flexible. So continental plates are less dense and they float atop an ocean of flexible rock. These are of course found above the ocean. These are the continents that we live on and stand on. Now, I've been talking a lot about rocks floating and sinking and on, you know, floating on top of other rocks. What does that possibly mean? And I've mentioned the word crust a few times too. Well, we need to understand the inside of the earth and, and how it's built, uh, how it is rather. The earth wasn't built, it just kind of happened the way that it did. The simple fact is that the crust is the top layer of rock on the earth, and it's the lightest, so it floats on the top. That's, that's where the lightest stuff ended up. The mantle is just beneath the crust, and it is the flexible layer that is hot and flows slowly. Okay, kind of like clay that you can shape slowly. It's not liquid, but it can slowly move around. This diagram really explains it best. The brown outside is the crust, just like with bread. It's the brown outside. It's made of rocks. It's on the outside. It's the crust. The mantle is this orange color. The outer core is this yellowish orange color, and the inner core is this whitish yellow color. Now, just let me give you a simple example, right? If you were to fill a water bottle, if you were to fill a water bottle with different things, if you were to fill it with rocks, the rocks would go to the bottom, and then the lighter stuff would go on top, and it would go up, up, and up, and it would all go right in order, right, of lightest to heaviest. Well, the earth is a lot like that bottle of water. The inside of the earth going to the center is where the heaviest stuff falls to. The inside of the earth is made of metal. Like it's made of liquid metal, heavy stuff that all floated down to the bottom of the earth when the earth was forming. And then as you get further from the core of the earth, stuff gets lighter because if it were heavy, it would have sunk to the inner core. And then the crust is on the outside because all the other heavy stuff has already sunken down to the bottom. Now, we can still get a hold of very small amounts of certain metals and other things on the earth. That's where all the copper and all the other stuff we use comes from. But... The inside of the earth is mostly iron and nickel. It's heavy, heavy metal, okay? Um, the crust has just tiniest pieces of metal all distributed throughout it. So here I've got a video that I want you guys to take a look at real quick. This video shows a great example of how the plate tectonics actually happens. How do all of these different plates spread apart and break in the way that they do? How does all of that actually work and happen? So I'm going to play this video. It's going to be six minutes. And then we're going to keep going. Actually, we're going to jump to the most useful part Hi, of this video Jared. first. So here's the actual stuff. demonstration. The big idea today is that heat moves matter. Okay. So here's the video. We're going to go ahead and watch this. I'll sit quietly while it plays, and I want you to think about how this represents plate tectonics. It doesn't look like anything's happening to the crust, but as the liquid matter of the crust moves, the crust will start to move, and you'll actually see tiny cracks form, and those cracks will get bigger as the crust moves. So we're coming up on the 14 minutes and now we can see our crust starting to crack. Why is that happening? Well, that liquid matter, we heated it up and it's starting to move underneath the crust. And you can see that crust, they're called plates. Scientists call those plates and they're starting to move. Look at this one right here, seeing it start to separate. Take a look at these plates as they move. Why are they moving? the liquid matter underneath is moving too. Take a look right here and right here. Tiny cracks in the crust. They're gonna, the, the plates are gonna start to move and you'll see the cracks get bigger. Watch right here, watch it open up. Watch right here and right here. Ooh, there's one forming right here. 
Now we have a, a crack forming here. The crust is breaking in the plates right before our eyes. Why is that happening? The liquid matter underneath the crust is moving. Now we can start to see it happen. You can see the plate movements. As that liquid matter heats up, the crust, the plates move. Cracks are forming. We're at about 15 minutes in, and now we can see our plates really forming up here beautifully. We want you So, <clears throat> this video is a perfect demonstration of how plate tectonics actually happens. What he's got here is a bunch of milk in a pan with hot cocoa put on top of it. But they work just like the crust in the mantle of the earth. The crust is the hot cocoa, and the milk is like the mantle. As the milk begins to boil and move around the way that it does, it is moving. And the crust is made of like these solid flakes of, of rock, which in this case is the cocoa powder. What happens is that movement underneath, that movement of liquid or flexible rock in the mantle of the earth, it's constantly moving. You know if you boil a pot of water on the stove that it's going to move around and boil and bubble and swirl around in all kinds of ways. Well, this movement, or what's called convection, this convection, this moving of stuff because it's hot and then cooling down and then getting hot again, this convection is what is going to move the rock layers on the earth. And it is the reason that the plates are moving and the reason that we see all these cracks in the crust all over the world and the reason for the shape of a lot of our continents. It is because they are are spreading apart or ramming into each other or cracking down the middle. This is how the structure of the earth came to be the way that it was, which means this is how it's probably going to be in the future too. And we can rely on those facts and use them to understand the world. So I'm going to connect real quick to something called the rock cycle. Okay, the rock cycle is eighth grade. Um, I'm not going to review it deeply and we're, we won't teach it super heavily either. The rock cycle is when rocks start out as mountains right we've got like a mountain of rock okay well that mountain gets hit by wind and snow and rain and ice and it slowly breaks down into tinier rocks and those rocks they get washed away into the ocean or into our rivers and they become sedimentary sedimentary rocks they start out as igneous and then and then become sedimentary so sediment means little pieces of rock sedimentary rocks are rocks made of tiny other rocks that were eroded from an igneous mountain. Well, over time, the layers build up and they get heavier and heavier. And the bottom layer has so much weight on top of it. And it actually starts to sink back down into the mantle. And then it gets hot. And if it gets too hot, it'll melt and then turn back into an igneous rock. So we start out as liquid magma, which cools down into igneous rock, which erodes into sedimentary rock, which then heats up into metamorphic rock, which if it melts too much, it turns back into igneous. I know it's a lot of big words, but we will actually spend some time understanding what these are and we'll probably have done or will do a bunch of flyers about this soon. So that is the rock cycle. I know it's really complex and I know it's a lot to go through quickly. All right, I wanna go back to something we already know about. We know about fault lines. Fault lines are those lines formed in rock strata in stratigraphy, those rock layers were split because of an earthquake and it created this noticeable line. Well, that line, if it's done at a giant scale, can be called a plate boundary. So these are the different ways that tectonic plates can interact with each other, right? I mentioned before that the earth is shaped the way it is, like the surface of the earth. The continents and the oceans are the way that they are because sometimes they ran into each other and other times they split apart or move past each other. Well, these are three kinds of plate boundaries that you have to know in preparation for your test. So there are convergent boundaries, divergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. And I'm going to show you an animation for each of them that helps you memorize what they are and what happens. There's also going to be one or two highlighted words that help you memorize what happens in a convergent boundary, what happens in a divergent boundary, what happens in a transform boundary. Okay, let's go ahead and look at those. So starting with divergent boundaries, I think these are really easy to understand. Divergent boundaries are when two plates move away from each other. 
it is when they split apart. To diverge when driving means to go a different way. You go left, I go right. That is a divergence. Okay, it's when one person goes one way and another person goes the other way. So in geology, in plate tectonics, a divergent boundary is when two pieces of rock moved away from each other. Okay, usually because magma or <clears throat> the mantle is coming up from underground and spreading them apart. Right, like it, it came in and pushed them apart and out of the way. So a divergent boundary is when two plates move away from each other. Look at this animation, it's flawless. It's showing the plates moving away from each other, okay? Now, divergent boundaries are awesome because they're where all new rocks on the planet come from. In the ocean, for example, divergent boundaries are called seafloor spreading centers, okay? <clears throat> seafloor spreading centers. I know it's a lot of words, but the seafloor is a tectonic plate, it's an oceanic plate, Okay, it, <coughs> it can be spread apart by the magma that's rising up from underneath the surface. And when that magma rises up, eventually it will rise so high that it actually hits the ocean and turns into solid rock. And then more will rise up and spread that new rock away. And then more will rise up and spread that new rock away. And then more will rise up and spread that new rock away. <coughs> so here at a divergent boundary called a seafloor spreading center, magma rises to the seafloor and cools down to form new rocks. So this is what is causing the plates to move in the first place. This is what is making them move in any direction. Anytime there's a divergent boundary, that means it's pushing the rocks out of the way because new magma is taking its place. All right, let's take a look at this animation. <clears throat> so this animation shows the magma coming up pushing really hard on the rocks and forcing them to spread out of the way. So that is why the rocks are being moved, and that is where new rock is coming from. Guys, <clears throat> if this happens for long enough, it will not just build new rocks, it'll build up out of the seafloor. And that's where places like Japan and Hawaii come from. These mountains <laughs> of lava become mountains of rock, and they build on themselves, forming islands in the ocean. That's where the islands come from. All right, next up are convergent boundaries. Convergent boundaries, to converge, to have a conversation, to communicate, means to do something together. So convergent boundaries are when two plates move toward each other, to each other. That's when they come together. Because somewhere else in the world, they're being spread apart. And they have to bump into each other at some point, so they're going to hit each other. Okay? Convergent boundaries are when they move towards each other. Here's a great animation of a convergent boundary. We've got two layers of rock that are coming towards each other. They're going to hit into one another. All right. Convergent boundaries are really interesting. Convergent boundaries can be called subduction zones because something's going to have to lose in this fight. If you've got two plates and they come towards each other, somebody is going to lose. Someone is going to go up and someone is going to go down. And that is called a subduction zone. To subduce means to put something beneath you. So here is where an oceanic plate collides with and sinks below a continental plate. The rocks in the oceanic plate melt back into magma and the cycle continues. So if you have two different plates, an oceanic plate, which is heavy, and a continental plate, which is light, well, the heavy one's going to go down and the light one's going to go up, right? If you have two oceanic plates, they'll just hit each other and they'll both go down. And if you have two continental plates hitting each other, they'll hit each other and they'll both build a mountain. In almost all these situations, a mountain is built because there's all this folding and cracking and it's called uplifting that's going to happen. But either way, we have a pattern here. Divergent boundaries are when plates move away and that is where new rocks come from. Convergent boundaries are when they move towards and that is where old rocks are destroyed and going to be turned back into new rocks when they become lava. So take a look at this animation. We've got one plate, the oceanic plate, coming in, hitting this mountain, this continental plate, and it is going to go down, and it's going to melt, and that melted lava is going to rise up and form a volcano where new rocks are going to be made.
So the cycle is a perfect cycle. It's all about cycles in this class. <clears throat> Lastly, our transform boundaries. A transform boundary is when two plates move beside each other. They go past each other, kind of like this, right? I guess like this is best. It's kind of when they go past each other. Not up or down, like side to side, past each other. Okay? This is called a transform boundary. So this is when they move beside each other. This can cause earthquakes. This can do all kinds of stuff. But this doesn't really lift anything up or lift anything down. It's just when two things happen to be going opposite directions past each other. All right. So back to this, that rock cycle. Everything is about circles in this class. The rock cycle is when igneous rocks are eroded to form sedimentary rocks, which are subducted to make metamorphic rocks, which are melted back into igneous again. This cycle is the rock cycle. And it is embodied by the definition of plate tectonics. So, this here is the big picture. Over here is a convergent boundary. The oceanic plate is being subducted by the continental plate. And over here is a divergent boundary. The oceanic plates are spreading apart because the hot semi-liquid rock from the mantle is coming up and spreading them apart and forming magma and lava, building new rocks. So this entire cycle demonstrates how the entire planet's rocks move around. How did all the continents get their shapes? How did they move the way that they did? This one picture, this one model shows how the entire thing works. You're going to use this model on your test. This is super important for understanding how this works. And again, the entire video you just watched explains what happens here. So keep this in mind and be happy now that you know about plate tectonics.